we, your rowdy rooks, DeSoto and Martin, <laughs> on our relentless search for humanity and humility on our <laughs> inclusive, welcoming islands, DeSoto. Is that the right way to... That, that is a very complicated introduction. All yes, right. how do you do? Sort of okay. Sort of okay. Well, should we go to our first slide and get into Probably that? Probably should. Okay, yeah. let's go to the first slide. Uh, Martin just came back from his sabbatical in Germany, in his homeland of Germany. And he's kind of in a post-sabbatical stress or tension syndrome situation because while he was there, he was thinking he was going to a socialist nirvana where costs were under control and it was more possible to build things for the common person. And you said you were approached by a potential client to build a house mm -hmm. on property that the client already owned, mm -hmm. and you looked into building a house, which may have been an A-frame, you said, mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. very dramatic thing like that. So there's your weekly German and lesson? And my, I can't remember what it was. It means all roof building, Nur all roof house. house. Nur dach house. All roof yeah. house, meaning yeah. the whole thing is made of a roof, mm -hmm. or two roofs. But you discovered to your dismay that trying to build this affordable house, single family house, was going to cost 500,000 euros. And was that just materials or construction as well? That was, both. Both, that was both, excluding the land. Right? Excluding the land, right. So that was so one So it really wasn't, mm -hmm. it was pretty much like it is on Oahu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had not found it yeah. as wonderful as yeah. you'd hoped it would be. No, and the other event was our exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, being a native of Bavaria. She's facing a similar, mm -hmm thing to, and I call it the Department of Bavarian Homelands Syndrome, where okay. because of the same reasons that the locals, the more normal mm -hmm. locals can't make it anymore, yeah. the, the, the government tries to keep them and helps them out. But even with a quarter of supporting them, yeah. you end up with a 1,400 square foot slice of a, of a row house for about a million euros, which is about the same as right. dollars, right? right? Right. So there we go. That formerly, to say the least, socialist sort of culture went away, right? So I'm coming back here, sort of sobered up. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Because that was about, you know, we shouldn't even do, if we look at the bigger, biggest picture of the globe, and we shouldn't do single family anymore, Correct. we should keep any land that we have unbuilt because we need it for anything else but mm -hmm. sprawling it, right? right? So we need to densify the cities and yes. we need to uh, basically build up. Yeah. And, and we should also go back to renting, right? Because why does anyone, everyone have to own a piece of right. the earth? Right, and hold on to it in the most frantic mm -hmm. way. Why don't we share the earth, right? right. And we are visitors mm -hmm. and, and get away from this sort mm -hmm. of paranoid uh, idea of, of owning and having to have, you know, have it. And, but, but that is here the next problem. These are rental prices here, and this is per square. Uh, meter in euros, and so we got it. We got to convert that here. And Munich, where this is all happening on the on the personal side, is in the in the lower third, mm -hmm. even, and that is ten euros per square meter. So this translates into a dollar per square foot. Mm -hmm. um, Paris and uh, Oslo and some other Scandinavian and 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 metropolises are. You said London too. Uh, London too have the highest, but they're not even reaching thirty, meaning three dollars. Um, and and we get to, I mean, even the affordables here are pretty yeah. much like four dollars or forty uh, euros per per square uh, meter, right? So that's uh, where we're even topping that. Yes. And next picture. This is really sort of hurting me or gets very to my heart because. As we talked a lot, I grew up like that yeah. in, in an urban fabric. I uh, had my most beautiful parts of my childhood on that rented space up there in the attic with a roof terrace, and I let that inform my work. So the project at the bottom we've yeah. been talking about at times here, post-occupancy evaluated. But uh, that that's gets... A, that's the treetop. That's the treetop apartments, right, yeah. Right. This is all getting tougher and tougher because, as we said, if you have this discrepancy, between uh, you know that uh, rents are not uh, basically people don't get paid proportionally more. Correct. Uh, so they can only afford so much and so little, 
and then the cost of renting and owning go exponentially through the roof, then you get this discrepancy. And that means as a developer, who we yes. most likely like to not blame, but to guilt, maybe, right? We can't even do this because even if you're like not making the super profit and run away and get rich, right? If you try to do it in a reasonable way, you have a hard time because the cost of construction is That's so right. through the roof. Right and out of control yeah. that the margin is just not working anymore. That's so right. we really need That's models. Right. And while you know, trying to get back to the pace here and being on a jet lag, next picture please here, I'm running in the morning and I run into uh, a Rainbow Drive uh, operator and owner, Jim Gusakuma, who according to a discussion that Kurt Sandburn and I had a while ago, we were saying he built the best piece of architecture mm -hmm. on the island at the top right, which is his canopy addition to his facilities out there on uh, Kapahula Avenue. And he was saying, Martin, I just came back from Tokyo a couple of times and I thought about you because there's a guy who impressed me because he was able to make it yeah. to live on the dollar equivalent uh, or the yen equivalent to a thousand dollars, including uh, eating, which is his, his field of expertise and dwelling. But he says he shrinks his, down his footprint of lodging even more like eight square feet or something. So this uh, reminds us of the metabolist movement of the capsule mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mm -hmm. whole, whole trend. And he says, we got to get back to that, especially yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah. We're climatically privileged. We could have the whole island be our living room. Mm -hmm. He practices that. I always meet him. He's, yeah, yeah, out, yeah. he's out there on the beach yeah, and yeah, watches yeah. the surfers and surfs himself. And then, you know, that's his living room time in Correct. the morning. Right. Correct. right. So yeah. I, you know, Jim, promised we're going to tackle that yeah, and address yeah. that and try to, with an emerging generation, uh, take you up on your offer to, to do research on that one. But for the time being, let's follow my jet lag here. Next slide. Because I was then jet lagging, couldn't sleep, so I was stumbling on uh, our uh, strip, uh, which is uh, Kalakaua Avenue. And you see the urban nomads coming in at night mm -hmm. if the police is not or pushing coming out, out at night, we should say. Exactly. And I feel increasingly bad because our promise that we made to people like Jeff up there in the, in the left corner, who's an urban nomad of the finest kind, we haven't been able to provide solutions for him right. as we show in the top right as the stratosphere Lanai Grove that is stacking cargo steel Correct. containers just right. like to a height on the ship. So we yet have to get there. And instead, I'm thinking I maybe have hallucinations yeah. and there's some alien in the back there like because there's this thing. blue thing. So yeah. what is that? Let's yeah. get closer. Next picture. Next picture, yes. And it's you can barely see, and this is interesting, we we're like comparing, you know, human activity to buildings activities, right? right? And this reminded us of the pre-contact yes. days of what you did it in the, when it was dark, right? Absolutely. And back in those days, Native Hawaiians had no virtually no light after, mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. sunset. Mm -hmm. You could build a big fire, but if you lit a kukui nut, mm -hmm. there's barely any light at all. Yeah, yeah. So once you're inside your Hali Pili, yeah. it's black yeah. and you go to sleep. Yeah, and the Waikiki Circle Tower that we did a show about not that long ago is nicely within that tradition because people are mostly asleep in the right. middle of the night. So and no it's, lights. So it's not there. But that blue thing out there, what in the world is that? <laughs> so let's get... Uh, Going here, and we try to next picture. We try to identify um, where where it was in our walking encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Don Hibbert right. um, is about to get us the data from the DPP, but he's so busy around teaching. Thank you, Don, yes. and also preparing the National Dokomomo Symposium that right. you're involved too. Um, it it will take a little longer, but we got pretty close, and we're able to sort of bracket the, the era yeah, of when, when it, was, it built, was built, right? Right. Because this one here was when Kennedy was cruising down that street, and that was in 63. Right, that's so in the three, summer of 1963. Uh, and a few months before, he was doing the same in Dallas, which that's right. was tra ended tragic, as we know. That's right. And then the other uh, sort of proof of evidence we found, which is the next picture here, this is the uh, when Hawaii 5 all started, and that was in 68. Right, the fall and of 68. There we see it's already there. So Correct. somewhere in between it was built. Correct, right? right. That we found out. Yeah. And then let's go to the next slide. Um, it's, you know, that, that kind of glow. Uh, we've been featuring mm -hmm. a couple of incidents in the past. There was the sort of the neon halo around the La Ronde. Yeah, that's right. On the Ala Moana building. That's right. Seen and in the opening of Hawaii 5.0. Exactly. Right. As much as the plinth. 
of the outrigger on Kalakaua, not that far away across the street Correct. from from this project here. But these were like these sort of more innocent sort of like mm -hmm. heydays of everything and right. showing off and neon. Exactly. In these days, it's probably LED, so it's environmentally yes. a little bit yes. more. But yes. you're still thinking about why are you like highlighting every slab of the lanai of that building in such a pretty obnoxious way, right? So there must be a reason. So what makes this building so special? In order it, right. to be justified to do that. Well, right? we're gonna see. So let's you know wake up here. Let's go to the next slide, and this is how the thing looks uh, in the mornings. And we see there has been some uh, makeup, mm -hmm. you know, been doing uh, some. Yeah, makeup artist was I guess brought in to, uh, to do make something. the facade look uh, more beautiful. And we will see what what that means in detail. And next picture here, it wasn't that I wasn't warned or prepared because you kindly, I mean, you meant well. And, well, you know, I needed to let being, you know. You needed yeah. to prepare me to sort of moderate the shock that I was then yes. getting into because you sent me this article sort of halfway through mm -hmm. uh, the sabbatical and it basically told the story that uh, this was formerly an 88 room small room uh, hotel mm -hmm. that a developer a Japanese developer bought for 25 million and put another 50 million mm -hmm. so twice as much into it to remodel it to basically make each floor one suite of 20 to 50, 100 uh, square feet. And that, if you do the math, means almost 6 million per floor per suite. And that wowed us. Well, and one of the things least. that I had said to you was these smaller 1960s and 70s hotel buildings mm -hmm. have smaller rooms than what people prefer now, particularly yeah. bathrooms. Yeah. There is no way to easily go in and remove those mm -hmm. interior rooms. They are part of the structure. Mm -hmm. They are poured concrete. Mm -hmm. So that's why, if they did this, yeah. that's why there was such a huge expense per floor. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, let's get to the next picture because we were like spying around and seeing what it is. So the sign was up. I'm not as fluent in Spanish as others, as Suzanne is, for example. So, but it sounded familiar to me because there is our little at very top left our little uh piing car in germany is mm -hmm. our vintage little renault mm -hmm. and from renault this is the other sort of evolution there there was a car that was launched to be the competitor to right. lee ayakaka's original chrysler minivan mm -hmm. which in, i can see it in, looks very much like exactly in the mid 80s and it evolved pretty well except the very last facelift sort of like but that's you know I they're don't making quite... it look more like an suv exactly yeah mm -hmm. and so that part they lose me on that one but but sort of never mind but sort of i know the term from there and it basically means space sure. or in this case pretty pathetically spacious yes. Yes. right so that means the bigger the better yeah and we go to the next um, slide here. So the this is sort of the makeup on it. They're putting rouge, you, you said? Yeah, you know, right. Rouge is the rouge. stuff you put, women put on their yeah, cheeks. Yeah, sometimes there's this little sort of bedazzling. And you can right? put a little glitter there too. Glitter, if you like. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this reminds us of that one. And uh, you got to wonder why. And again, next picture is, I mean, there's rouge and then there's sun lotion. Right? There's sun uh, protection that yeah. you got to put on primarily. Here, the, the building is privileged because this is pretty much facing uh, sort of southeast. So the building is lucky to have this cute and sexy cylindric neighbor next to it mm -hmm. because it's going to shade it at some parts and points in the morning. But here, not anymore. This is sort of like 11-ish or 12. And that way, it gets pounded by the sun. Yeah. And this reminds me of this sort of like... Uh, suntan intensifying lotion that people put on, which every skin doctor says, says don't no, do. no, don't do right, that, right? right? That kind of coconut oil or whatever right. that is. Yes, right, so that right, would be right. the analogy to that one. They Correct. put on black tiles, right. they're glued onto it. So you would think, I mean, in Germany, if you're doing a remodel, it's also going to be an energetic remodel, there's no doubt, and they get tax, you know, support deductions for it. But here it's just about the surface, Correct. right? Correct. And so that's sort of unfortunate. And it's a heat sink. It's a heat it's, sink. It's going exactly. to conserve and put heat into exactly. the building, exactly. which then the AC has to cope with. Absolutely. Right. And the next picture here, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a building that has uh, nice integrity. At the top left, we have Tropical Tudor 
Uh, Bill had it, Suzanne and me out, and we were right on the other side of 1350 Anawana Boulevard that is currently getting a facelift as yeah. well. They decided to do some parts in yellow. Yes. And uh, so, you know, but, but it, it is still the original concrete that yeah. just got some yeah. tan on it, right? Yes, yes. But here, they're like in major parts covering up the buildings, uh, the building, and they pride themselves of having imported the most mm -hmm. fancy materials from all over the world. And then again, thinking about the carbon footprint of shipping this stuff in, mm -hmm. uh, makes you wonder, makes right. you wonder why. Right, right. And right. Uh, let's go to the next. A page here. This is the entrance, and you have this little, uh, which ticked you off a little further down right, the road with right, a green wall, right? right, right. Share right. That. Well, in this picture, we see there's a green wall on the left of the entrance, and that is, in theory, not only to beautify things, but it gives off oxygen mm -hmm. as well if you mm -hmm. use living plants. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit down the street, the Waikiki Beachcomber Hotel remodeled its facade, mm -hmm. and they put what looks like the gr a green wall up above mm -hmm. their yeah. entrance. Mm -hmm. It's fake. It's plastic. So it's an oh, absolute no. antithesis of what yeah, a green wall yeah, is yeah. and what it's supposed to do. Well, we use fossil fuel to make plastic yeah. to put up to look yeah, yeah. like plants. Well, as we said, you know, if you would do this in Russia because of exotic yeah, right. dreams right, of like, right. you know, but, but here where you have a 12 month growing cycle where you got to stop things from growing, you do plastic like there's no go, right? And then they make this other wall, which is probably want to look like a volcano because it's slightly tilted, tilted and yeah. tilted and, and battered wall. And next page, they're also, which is very hip these days, they basically put green walls yeah. inside these poor walls, and yeah. that's a seed, so they probably freeze the you know, <laughs> yeah, roots right, off. Right, right, and right. Whatever. And once you go outside, next picture here, you got the real green in front. Right. And here you got our urban nomads, you right. know, and you know, I didn't smell, but you know, it is a water bottle, so I'm just giving him the benefit of doubt that right. it wasn't vodka in there. Yeah, right, right. So this guy's taking a break. Why? Because it's cool under the tree. Right. And at night, next picture. The, the greenery on the street right next on the other side of the entrance of the hotel, this, this, uh, this green is nicely camouflaging and giving sort of protection to the urban nomads mm -hmm. at night. Mm -hmm. And so is next picture here, uh, my home, uh, the Waikiki Grant that we did a show about um, uh, a while ago here. To give credits to the board and to Ray and to Stephen, to everyone who brings back the lush nature. And this is an exclusive, uh, inclusive, uh, yeah. welcoming green versus an exclusive. Right. Because this is right. along the sidewalk and everyone can touch it and see it and feel it, right? Yeah. And so, next picture, um, so is the lobby. The lobby, which was uh, sort of impressing you, right? Because you said yeah. way back when that was built. Yeah. It was probably built around the same time. We know when this was built and the other one. And it yeah. wouldn't surprise me if same architect, Ernest Hara, mm -hmm. would be the architect, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the two buildings. And so the lobby is open and everyone is welcome as long mm -hmm. as she, he behaves. And next picture, and you said it, it's even, you know, it's, it's, it puts another burden because there's a bar Absolutely. on top of that. Absolutely. So, in this building, that yeah. you've got people coming in and out of your, your lobby to get to and to get out of exactly. when potentially they are drunk. Yeah, yeah. And, and here, this is our watchdog, you know, Morales, who is nicely at night in a very moderative way, trying to always yeah. basically work things out with people, and it works pretty well. There is no security border or access control you can yeah. actually walk up to any floor and knock on everyone's door that's amazing and, these days and it works right yeah. so why do we have this paranoia of being exclusive and being guarded off you know well and unfortunately the richer you get the more you have this paranoia right that's what i was going to say the, is and the more you could disconnect yourself from the yeah. real life and yeah. real people which was your point yeah right? yeah so let's go to the uh, next slide, which is me having to thank my uh, philanthropist patron, the owner of my unit, who gives it to me for you know, a steal, almost for free, if you consider the expenses he has. And again, I'm the beneficiary, and I have this easy breezy, yeah. uh, amazing, tropical, exotic uh, lifestyle that you know, I wished I would find when I come to Correct. the islands, but I have in very few units, I, I have that. So yeah. here I have that. So how does that compare to the Espacio? Yeah. Next picture here. 
<laughs> well, this is quite a different situation. And what I was going to say was, as you just said, the idea of an open lobby versus a closed lobby connects to what your financial situation mm -hmm. is. This is meant for the very upper, upper sliver of people who are extremely wealthy, who can afford this, to go from one comfortable enclosed situation in one country yeah. to another one here. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's like you never even left because mm -hmm. this interior looks like everything all over the world for yeah. anybody who's well-to-do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, our fellow journalists from the Star Advertiser always make nice jokey, ironic sort of mm -hmm. headlines here. Yes, so right. here's the sweet life. Right. There's an affinity pool that's probably going to put some weight on the building and is stressing that structural you know, mm -hmm. challenge that you already pointed out. Right. Let's go to the next slide and do what we occasionally do here, do our little science demonstration, because I'm going to wear uh, my cap here. And you're going to demonstrate, so this, is the... Th this is the sun. Mm -hmm. So here's the sun shining from this angle, and you can see that Martin's face is partly shaded by the cap. But if I come down like this, when the sun is going down, he no longer has that benefit yeah. of the shade there and the direct sun and, there. And you're, you're the sunset sun now, and you're, right. this is direction right. ocean. Correct. And this is, if we could get to the picture 26 here, um, this is exactly what um, this facade is pretty much facing. And we've been saying, you know, being behind glass doesn't really help. It actually yeah. worsens that. Correct. It's a greenhouse. And, and it's a hot house. And what's that thing in the middle there? What did we find out? It's well, a, you said that that is a metal screen, which looks decorative, but actually it shields the jacuzzi, mm. which each one of the units has. Mm -hmm. I said, is it open to the open air? And you mm -hmm. said to a limited degree because there's not that much of it that's open. So yeah, it's really yeah. for privacy, yeah, yeah. not for air circulation. And maybe it's also giving the Hawaiian blessing because oh, every building these kind of days a, needs to have this yeah, pattern that like, of okay, we can check off the Hawaiian. Beam. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Right. So how do we know all this? Again, next picture here, thanks to our guys from the Star Advertiser. And we're really cracking up and almost peed our pants about a certain passage in there. Oh, yeah. And that gets us to the next slide. Uh, yeah, and the quote that was in the newspaper says, the views are spectacular. The only thing in the way of the ocean is a banyan tree. Well, <laughs> what he means is that he's saying that it's nicer than a, another building would be. Mm -hmm. But the way it's phrased, it almost sounds like, well, if we just cut the tree down, you could look at the ocean completely yeah, yeah. without anything in the way. Well, the tree is not only a major aspect of Waikiki where the nightly hula show occurs, mm -hmm. as you see in the picture, but it's also, as we pointed out, something that shades the facade of the building yep. when the sun gets low enough at a certain time of year. So you're actually from a, from a post-fossil, mm -hmm. tropical, exotic attitude point of view, you want to be in the lower right. floors because you're shaded. you got the natural protection. And then since our you know, friends from the Exotica movement, Martin Denny and Dennis Baxter mm -hmm. and Arthur Lehman, That's right. That's were right. supposedly in the Queen K and listening to the exotic right. uh, animals Birds in the, in the zoo, tree. Right. they worked this into their music. Right. And we reminded ourselves that some kind of, which birds The minor they? birds. The okay. minor birds gather in that banyan tree every night and scream until the sun goes yeah, down. And that's a spectacle. And I mean, you don't get that at home the wherever you come from. That's exactly. So you that's don't right. want to block this out, right? right. So we always conclude with our uh, hopefulness, know, uh, polemic propositions. So let's get there. The next, next picture yeah. here. So this is uh, juxtaposing the, the remodeling. And again, the three horizontal louvers below the slabs don't do anything as far as no, shading. Just they just hide the little LED yeah. right. gadgets in there, right? And we were pointing out in a couple of shows at the top how awesome that is to be up there in the breeze and be easy breezy and have as little as possible disconnecting you from that. Mm -hmm. So really filigree metal guardrails have been really proven to be pretty good. And so let's get to the next picture, which also was our opening picture here, because when our exotic escapism expert Suzanne was here some 20 years ago, and she was some, taking some surf lessons with Big Bear there at that point, she was having the picture taken in front of the neighboring building, which is the parking garage yeah. for the Hyatt, for the Hyatt. Right? right? And she called that a shadow house. Right. Right. And because it's got the shadowing of those vertical. Yeah. Those vertical and we're, we're saying the cars have it actually better than the people because right. they got the breeze right. and they got the shade. 
So and I want to be a car, right? Rather than be in Espacio, where yeah. you don't have that. And probably my parking rate is not anywhere close because at this point mm -hmm. we got to basically disclose <laughs> that the daily rates are like outrageous $3,000 to $10,000 yeah. in that suite, right? Yeah. Which is really like... So next picture here, uh, again, is what we dream about is like when people come to Hawaii, present them something they don't have where they come from. Right. And I think there was a show which I'm happy, I was browsing through the schedule today and I heard about power greens or something like that. So mm -hmm. some colleagues were talking mm. about bringing food right. production into the vertical, right? Right. right? So things like that, experience and mix the people who live here with the people mm -hmm. who visit. This sort of model Correct. of inclusivity Correct. we're Correct. kind of talking about. It's right? as if you live here for a short exactly. time. Exactly. And next page here, again, this is sort of the suggestion and the recommendation of tropical tourist expert Suzanne. But you told me an interesting thing about the gentleman at the bottom left. Well, relation. that's Prince Kuhio, who was a Hawaiian, pure Hawaiian man. But as a youth, he was sent to a military school in California in the 1880s with his two brothers. And while they were very westernized, they also were so in, con in contact with their Hawaiian culture that they introduced surfing mm -hmm. to California mm -hmm. in 1885. Mm -hmm. They had mm -hmm. surfboards made mm -hmm. and went surfing. Yeah, yeah. Well, California is a hotbed of surfing yeah, now, but yeah, it's yeah. all because of him and his brothers. Yeah, that's awesome. It is, it is. So it, he was an ambassador for both, right? Correct. For both and cultures. so he's depicted in his Hawaiian clothing. He's depicted in American yeah, Western yeah. clothing here, but he's got on a Hawaiian cape as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So it's the two cultures. Yeah, yeah. And that's something we're going to be talking about oh, in a future yeah. show. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about skins. All right. Human skin, the mm -hmm. clothing we wear, and then what skins we live in as well as buildings. Can't wait for that because mm -hmm. our most difficult show to do, but probably one of the most relevant. It will right? be. It will be. So next picture here is uh, an event that was just last weekend where all of a sudden I was out swimming. So they were uh, putting the stage together in a couple of tents and they had this sort of block party. And uh, it filled up really like crazy, and it had like, uh, you know, these, these uh, local acts here, like this uh, Taimana girl who played the ukulele so crazy, as I've never, you told yeah. me there are other ones that yeah. she learned from. Yeah. And she was telling the story that Don Ho was uh, discovering her on the street and becoming her mentor. And again, this was a free event, and it was sponsored by a couple of people, but one of them, which we had done a show about, the uh, um, the Princess Kailani Hotel, yeah. right? Yeah. So maybe they have, if they haven't, please listen to the show we did and that we encourage you to stick with your tradition, right? Yeah. And I see this as a positive sign of sort of a people power yeah. a movement from, from bottom up as keeping the Queen's Beach public and, and including people and making this a free event. And uh, next and final picture here, we hope it's going to spill into yeah. the bigger uh, uh, macro fabric yeah. of Waikiki and doing all of that and more what we're Correct. talking about. Correct. And if you guys find the time, our most activist journalist, Kurt, had uh, written these beautiful words. So if you could take the time before and push, uh, sort of stop on hold and, and read through that, we won't have the time because we're out of time. Correct. So. Um, Thank you all for your attention. Thank you to Soto. Thank you. And looking forward to soon. I think we're on to something. So I think we spotted a, a project that is sort of trying to do things a little bit more along the lines, we would hope. So let's do that next. All if right. You don't mind all the right. Show. All right. And until then, please stay inclusively exotic, exotically inclusive. Bye-bye. <laughs>